Settlements in Galilee, Tel Kazir and Gev Hayon. This was how the Syrians viewed these settlements for 19 years from the Golan Heights through the openings of their fortified gun positions. For 19 years, the members of these kibbutzim had lived and worked under Syrian guns. Long stretches of territory around the ancient ruins of Dan, whose settlement started 4,000 years ago, remained out of reach as long as they were in the shadows of the Syrian guns. The bunkers from which the deadly fire was poured are now sites for tourists. The Syrian soldiers have been replaced by camera-carrying rubbernecks enjoying the sights. The Syrian tanks have been replaced by plows. The springs of the Jordan are no longer in danger of being diverted and unite to create the only river that brings life to the sun-scorched earth. For the first time since statehood, Israel's lifeline from Dan to Kinneret is secure. From the sources of the Jordan to the shores of Lake Kinneret, the land will revert to its splendor of ancient times when the Jewish historian Josephus Flavius described it as the gate to paradise. The entire area of the Golan Heights is one and a quarter million dunams, which in its 70 kilometers length drops from a height of 1,200 meters above sea level in the north to 300 meters above sea level in the south. Under Syrian rule, it was a brooding, shabby land studded with fortifications and army camps. The climate is almost European. The air is as crisp and fresh as in the Swiss mountains. The present plans call for a population of 12,500 living in 22 settlements. With the Golan Heights secured, another great project can be carried out. The development of an 11 kilometer stretch along the shores of the Kinneret for so long under Syrian fire. plan to turn this part of the coast into a recreation area and to establish four settlements here. All this and the rehabilitation and reclamation of the Golan Heights is to a large extent the responsibility of the Jewish National Fund, which also collects all needed data and does the initial survey. Engineers of the JNF supervise and direct the land reclamation work. It was enough to make one ear of corn grow where nothing grew before. Today, before the first tractor turns a sod, 
the experts are worrying about marketing the settlers' produce. There would be little point in making such prodigious efforts to turn the plateau into productive farmland if at the end the produce cannot be sold. At present, farming is still in an experimental stage. What grows best here has still to be determined, but the economic future looks good. The emphasis is expected to be on field crops as well as several varieties of vegetables and fruits which thrive in a cool climate. Raising cattle on natural pastures has long been a dream of Israel's agricultural planners. Never have they had an environment so suitable for it as the Golan. It is hoped to have about 10,000 cattle on the plateau. The first settlement, Ramat Habanyas, stands in what was, for 20 years, no man's land. After the army worked for a few months to clear the mines, the JNF took over and cleared the rocks. A new kibbutz was born. Where long ago hostile gun emplacements and tanks overlooked the fields, a fledgling agricultural settlement is taking root. The rich, good soil of the kibbutz is already green with the new growth of various vegetables. A new road has been constructed to link the settlement with the Galilee Highway and the nearby waterfalls of Babanyas. The springs gush from caves where once the Greek god Pan was venerated during the period of Greek domination of the Middle East. Labanias attracts thousands of tourists throughout the year. Landscape architects and nature conservationists help to plan facilities for the many visitors. Down in the valley are the fields of Kibbutz Dan. Dan, immortalized by the Bible as the most northern boundary of the Kingdom of Israel, was till 1967 the northernmost settlement on Israel's frontier with Syria, and as such was subjected to unprovoked shelling from the Syrian cannons in the hills of the Golan Heights. Life in Kibbutz Dan became a hazard. Only reminders of Dan's 19 years of hardships and danger are the trenches and shelters scarring the kibbutz lawns. These alone recall the memories of midnight alarm, of frightened children and screaming shells. Syrian tanks actually succeeded in reaching the gates of the settlement before being repelled. One of the burnt-out tanks serves as a monument to Dan's struggle for survival, and children now play on its rusting hulk. The settlement's pride is the Beth Usishkin Nature Museum, which was established in 1955 in honor of the late JNF president, Menachem Usishkin. There is a wide variety of botanical, archaeological, and zoological exhibits.
Hotel Dan is a beauty spot as old as man himself, occupying the location of the biblical town of Dan, which achieved greatest importance during the reign of King Jeroboam. This nature reserve harbors the sources of the River Dan, one of the tributaries of the Jordan. At the exit of the reserve, the JNF has provided benches and tables to add to the pleasure of vacationers. A peaceful atmosphere permeates today the settlements in the valley, which were threatened from the Golan Heights before the Six Days' War. The threat from the heights has been eliminated. What once was a huge armed Syrian camp posed for aggression, a war arsenal upon a barren landscape, is now being transformed into an agricultural area. Before June 1967, the city of Cunetra was virtually an armed camp. The town looks now totally deserted, except for the new settlers who temporarily live in the former Syrian officers' quarters while waiting for their permanent houses to be completed. They are members of Kibbutz Marom Golan, mostly Sabras and new immigrants from Anglo-Saxon countries. They found work in various activities and enterprises. Thousands of motorists know the petrol station which is serviced by members of the kibbutz. A small cafe serves daily refreshments to hundreds of tourists, settlers of the heights, and soldiers who do their military duties on the Syrian frontier. The kibbutz runs a 35-bed hotel, the only one in the whole area. Apart from the yield from tourism, the kibbutz has 700 head of cattle on 25,000 dunams of pasture land and thousands of dunams of field crops and vegetables. Givat Yoav is planned as a Moshav Shitufi, or cooperative village. It has fewer people than a kibbutz. An old house is used as the center, painted by an enthusiastic young artist. The Moshav has 3,000 dunams of field crops and pasturage, 800 head of sheep, and hundreds of turkeys. The aim is to double all these figures within a year. From Givat Yoav, there is a beautiful view of Lake Kinneret, with the hump known as Susita, jutting up in the middle. From it, Syrian gunners used to bombard the valley at their whim. El Al, another new settlement in the Heights, has already three married couples and four children. There are plenty of candidates wishing to join, but there is not enough room. However, they manage to cultivate 6,500 dunams of land and take care of 3,000 turkeys and 400 sheep.
Nine new settlements have been established up to now, but it is believed that this number can easily be doubled. The transformation of the Golan Heights to civilian settlements is a symbol of Israel's faith in ultimate peace. The only inhabitants of the area who did not flee as a result of the war were the Druzes, who were never treated equally under Syrian rule. They are members of a mysterious sect, still clinging to their old ways of life. friendly people, proud of their past, but profoundly loyal to Israel. One of their villages lies at the foot of Mount Hermon, which dominates the whole area. Only recently, the Jewish National Fund constructed a road up to the peak. The largest number of machines ever used in Israel for road building was put into operation. In Jewish lore and legend, Mount Hermon occupies an important place. One legend has it that Israel's mountains complained before God that none of them but Mount Sinai of the desert had been chosen for the giving of the law. It was easy to show that none could compare with lofty Mount Sinai except Mount Hermon, who in his grief shed pure tears which assembled to feed the River Jordan. To console him, God gave him his white crown as a symbol of purity. The snow fields cover Mount Hermon for the greater part of the year. Here are slopes which form an almost ideal ski terrain. In the morning you race on skis along Mount Hermon. And in the afternoon you enjoy water skiing on Blue Lake Kinneret. Golan Heights and the Valley are one. Men gather in the crops without looking over their shoulders. The people in the valley can breathe freely as above them the high plateau of death has become a source of life. Dan to Kinneret, truly a gate to paradise.